Hi, my name is Sam Sabota, and I'm a Jira Line Solution Architect with Atlassian. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of the Jira Line Enterprise Insights data schema to help you quickly get up and running with using Enterprise Insights. At the end of this video, you will learn what data schemas are available in Enterprise Insights and what are they used for, the different types of tables in Enterprise Insights and what data they contain. Also, I will give you some tips on how to find foreign keys, platform terminology, custom fields, and tags. And lastly, I'll walk you through the Enterprise Insights release documentation available on the Jira Line knowledge base. Enterprise Insights is a data warehouse that contains your Jira Line data hosted in the Azure Cloud. It extends Jira Line's reporting capabilities by enabling you to create custom dashboards and reports with your Jira Line data using your existing data visualization tools such as Tableau or Power BI. This also allows you to create powerful visualizations that merge your Jira Line data with your data from your finance, HR, or CRM systems. You can also export data from Enterprise Insights to your own data lake or data warehouse. Before getting started with Enterprise Insights, you will need to have access and connectivity to your Enterprise Insights instance set up and verified by Atlassian. If you do not have access or cannot connect to your Enterprise Insights instance, please contact the Atlassian support team. You will also need a data visualization tool which can connect to a SQL Server database such as Tableau or Power BI, in order to build dashboards and reports with your Enterprise Insights data. You can also connect to Enterprise Insights with Azure Data Studio or SQL Server Management Studio to write SQL queries. Finally, you will need an understanding of how to query SQL databases and create table relationships with database tables. Now, I'm going to first cover the data schema types in Enterprise Insights and their intended uses. The Enterprise Insights schemas consist of SQL views and not tables. Views have the same structure as tables with rows and columns, but they are read only. For your reference, throughout the rest of this video, I will refer to the Enterprise Insights views as tables. The first schema type that you will find in Enterprise Insights is the current schema, which is designed for direct query usage. You will use the current schema if you're connecting a data visualization tool to develop reports and dashboards directly with Enterprise Insights or writing SQL queries. The names of the tables in the current schema are prefixed with a current underscore DW. Records that have been deleted through the Jira line user interface are filtered out of the current schema tables. Also, foreign keys have been replaced and validated to ensure there are no dead ends when you join current schema tables. The second schema type in Enterprise Insights is the export schema. The export schema is used for loading the data from Enterprise Insights into your own data lake or data warehouse. The names of the tables in the export schema are prefixed with export underscore DW. Unlike the current schema tables, the export schema tables include deleted records which are identified with a yes in the deleted flag column to help you determine the records that need to be removed in your data lake or data warehouse. Here in this example, we are looking at records in the export underscore DW epic table. For epic ID 1173, the deleted flag column has a yes, which identifies that the record has been deleted from Jira line. Lastly, in the export schema tables, the foreign keys of deleted items have not been replaced. What you have learned in this section is that there are two types of data schemas in Enterprise Insights, current and export. You learn that the current schema has table names that are prefixed with current underscore DW. The current schema tables are designed for direct query usage and deleted records are filtered out and foreign keys have been replaced and validated to ensure there are no dead ends when joining tables. You also learn that the export schema has table names that are prefixed with export underscore DW. The export schema tables are designed for loading data into your own data lake or data warehouse. The tables include deleted records that are identified with a flag and foreign keys of deleted items have not been replaced. In this next section, you will learn about the different types of tables in Enterprise Insights and the data that is available within the tables. 
Master object tables contain the current state of data for JiraLine objects that you will find in fields on the Details panel tab and other tabs within the JiraLine user interface. Let's take a look at the master object table for epics. You will notice that some of the columns that you see, such as epic ID, epic name, and epic state, are on the details tab of an epic. In the epic table, you will also see columns for budget, total capex, and total opex, which are fields on the spend tab of an epic. Enterprise Insights has master object tables for features, stories, tasks, risks, dependencies, and other objects in Jira line. The next table type I'm going to talk about are log tables. Log tables contain the auto log data for Jira line objects. Now let's take a look at the log table for epics in Enterprise Insights. You will first notice that the log tables are identified with log in the table name. From looking at the records in the epic log table, data like the date timestamp of when an event occurred, action type, description of the event, and user ID of the user that made the change are contained in the log table. History tables provide historical data for JiraLine objects at a specific point in time. History tables have most of the same columns as their corresponding master object tables. Additionally, the history tables have two columns, fact valid from and fact valid to, that have date timestamps which record the state of the data for a specified time period. Here we have an example of the results for the epic history table where we can see the epic fact valid from and epic fact valid to columns that capture these date timestamps. The 9999-12-31 date timestamp in the fact valid to column indicates the current record for an object. A common use case for using the history tables is when you want to measure training metrics over a specified period of time. Next, I'm going to talk about the map tables in Enterprise Insights. Map tables are mapping tables which are necessary when you need to associate a table for a JiraLine object that has a one-to-many relationship with another JiraLine object. Some examples of this type of relationship are Epic and Programs and Epic and Program Increments. An Epic can be assigned to multiple programs and program increments through the JiraLine user interface. Map tables can easily be identified by the table name which contains map. Let's look at the map epic to program table in columns. Based on the columns in the map epic to program table, the table can be joined with the epic table on the epic ID to the FK epic ID column and to the program table on the program ID to the FK program ID column. Map tables may also contain additional data related to one of the mapped objects. In this example, you will see that there is a primary program flag column that identifies if a map program is the primary program assigned to the epic. Here is another example of columns that hold additional data for estimation, WSGIF and backlog ranking order related to each program increment for an epic in the map epic to program increment table. In this section, you learned about some different table types in Enterprise Insights. Master object tables contain the current state of data for a JiraLine object. Log tables contain the audit log data for JiraLine objects such as date timestamps, the type of action, and the user that made the change. History tables contain the historical data for JiraLine objects at a specific point in time and are useful for measuring trending and metrics over time. And lastly, map tables are mapping tables to join data between two JiraLine object tables where there are one-to-many relationships. In this next section, I will share some helpful tips when using Enterprise Insights. First, I'm going to talk about foreign keys in Enterprise Insights. A foreign key is an attribute in a database table that refers to a primary key in a master object table and is used to join the two tables. In Enterprise Insights, columns containing foreign keys are prefixed with FK in the column name. In this example, we see the foreign key columns in the feature table. There are foreign key columns for things such as product ID, program increment ID, and user owner ID. These columns can be joined to the corresponding JiraLine master object tables that contain the primary keys. 
null values in the foreign key columns are replaced with a zero value. Here is a record in the feature table where the FK program ID column has a zero value. By design, every master object table, like the program table, has a default record with a zero ID to ensure that you can safely interjoin with master object tables. Let's look at records in the program table. Here we see the program ID zero has a program name of no program assigned. If we were to interjoin the feature table with the program table on the program ID, you will see feature records with a zero in the FK program ID column in your query results, which makes sense because in zero line, features may not be assigned to programs. When joining a master object table with a map table, adder joins may be required as map tables do not contain a default record with an ID of zero. Next, I'm going to talk about where to find platform terminology in Enterprise Insights. In your JiraLine instance, you may have configured the platform terminology to translate the JiraLine out-of-the-box terminology to the terminology used within your organization. You may have noticed that the naming conventions for the Jira line objects in Enterprise Insights use the out-of-the-box terminology. In Enterprise Insights, the current underscore DW Agile object table contains the mapping of your customized platform terminology to the out-of-the-box terminology. This table can be used to display your custom terminology in your data visualizations while protecting you from the changes in the Enterprise Insights schema. In these results from the Agile object table, the customized platform terminology are contained in the customer object name and customer object name plural columns, and the out-of-the-box terminology is contained in the master object name column. Enterprise Insights enables you to take advantage of custom fields used with Jira line work items, such as epics and features. Columns for custom fields are present in the master object tables of work items where the custom fields can be used in Jira line. Here are the custom field columns in the feature table. You will see that the columns for custom fields utilize a generic naming convention. This is to ensure you are protected should there be changes to the Enterprise Insights schema. If you are using multi-value custom dropdown fields, the values for the multi-value custom dropdown fields are contained in a separate table, current underscore DW custom field list. This table needs to be joined on the custom field list ID foreign key column with the custom dropdown list foreign key column in the work item table. The last helpful tip that I'm going to share with you is where to find the data for tags. Tags in Jira line can be used with Jira line work items as a way to assign a label or a category that can be used as a filter in the Jira line user interface. Tag values are contained in the tag list table, and the table is joined on the tag list ID foreign key column within the work item table. In this last section, I'm going to cover the Enterprise Insights release documentation available on the Jira line knowledge base. You can find Enterprise Insights release notes on the Jira line knowledge base. To access the Enterprise Insights release notes, click on what's new on the Knowledge Base homepage. From there, links to the Enterprise Insights release notes are on the right side of the What's New page. Within the release notes, there is a release highlights section that details new features, content, and defect fixes. In addition, there are sections on new and updated tables. For each Enterprise Insights release, a data schema document is published detailing updates to the Enterprise Insights data schema. To access the document, you must first create a login on the Jira line knowledge base through the sign in button in the upper right. To view the Enterprise Insights data schema documents, click on Enterprise Insights from the Jira line knowledge base homepage. This will take you to the Enterprise Insights schema page where there are links to download the schema documents for each release. The Enterprise Insights Data Schema document is a downloadable Excel file. After opening the file, you will see five tabs. For this video, I won't be covering the Time Schema tab. The current DW and Export DW Schema tabs provide lists of tables and columns in the current export schemas available in the Enterprise Insights release. The updated column 
provides the release number of when the COM was last updated. The FK Mapping tab is a catalog of tables and columns that hold foreign key values. It also provides a mapping of the foreign key column to the reference table and the reference column holding the corresponding value that the table can be joined on. Lastly, the version added column identifies the release the foreign key column was added to Enterprise Insights. Finally, the Scripts tab provides SQL scripts for you to be able to recreate the Enterprise Insights tables in your own data lake or data warehouse. This concludes our Enterprise Insights Data Schema Overview. Hopefully this will start you off on the right foot with being able to leverage your Geraline data by creating powerful and meaningful dashboards and reports for your organization. Now you may have questions about Enterprise Insights after watching this overview. Please reach out to your Alassian Technical Account Manager, Solution Architect, or the Alassian Support Team with your questions, and they will be happy to answer them for you. Good luck on your journey with Enterprise Insights, and thanks for watching.